Hello, and good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to WAG. The question is, are you wild about God? Today, we have the four Gs. We have a great story, a great song, a great craft, and a great trivia question. But before we go to our story, let's open up with prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, we thank you for another beautiful Sabbath day, Father, for which you have set aside for us. We thank you for all that you do for us and in us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, let's go to our first great G, a great story. Hi, WAG friends. It's good to see you again. Today, I need your help. We are talking about the miracles of Jesus. And today, I need your help figuring out one of his miracles. So this is the story box. And the story box has inside some clues as to what miracle Jesus performed. So let's open up this story box and we're going to, we're just gonna take a look at some of our clues, okay? So here's the first clue. The first clue is medicine. Can you see it? Medicine. What does medicine have to do with Jesus's miracles? Okay, so that's the first clue, medicine. The second clue is a pillow, okay, and a blanket. A pillow and a blanket? What kind of miracle is that? Okay. That's our second clue. The third clue is water. Water? We do know that they often went to the river. I wonder if that could have something to do with this miracle. So this one is water. The last clue, a thermometer? Hmm, okay, so let's look at our clues again. We've got the thermometer, we've got water, we've got medicine, and we've got a pillow and a blanket. What do all these clues tell us about one of Jesus' miracles? Okay. So, Jesus went to the home of his follower, Peter. And Peter was married and he had a mother-in-law there. She was very, very sick. Some Bible scholars think she might have had malaria. And that means a high, high fever. The fever can mean you might, might die. The family was very, very worried about her. And so, of course, they were doing everything they could to help her. So first of all, the pillow and the blanket. She was bedridden. She could not get up. She could not do anything. She was completely bedridden, unable to move. The medicine, well, you know that they probably gave her all the kinds of medicine they could think of. Everything that they used back then. Maybe it was herbs, maybe it was a certain kind of potions that they mixed together, but you know that her family was trying every single kind of medicine that they could. Water. You know that she was drinking cool water and they probably had a cloth covered with cool water to put on her forehead and her neck. 
Now they did not have thermometers back then, of course, but the thermometer represents the fact that she had a really high fever. So they were probably pressing cool cloths on her neck, on her head, on her body. They might have even wrapped her in a wet cloth to try to bring the fever down. And sometimes when a person has a really high fever, you can touch them and it feels burning hot. So these are all the clues. When Jesus came in and saw her, he took her hand and when he took her hand, the fever left her. She was healed instantly. Not only was she able to get up, but she got up and she started to minister to them. That means that she was able to go around and make, make food for them to eat and clean up and do the things that she would have been doing before she became ill. So this was a true miracle. And she was completely healed because she started working. Now, I want you to take a look at this because this is going to help us remember what happened to Peter's mother-in-law. This is going to help us remember what Jesus did. You know that when you have a fever, you are burning up. I'm sure that you've had a fever and your parents were giving you medicine. They were putting a cold cloth on you. They were putting their hands. They might have said, you feel like you're burning. Well, this fire represents the fever, okay? So, the fire represents the fever. Remember, Jesus came and all he had to do was put his hand in her hand. And when he put his hand in her hand, the fever, the fever that she had been fighting, the fever that they were afraid of, the fever that actually could have taken her life, the fever started to dissipate. It started to go away. Just like the flame here. All it took was Jesus' touch. So when you think about a miracle, remember this candle and remember Jesus' touch. Thank you. I'll see you next time. Wow. That story was awesome. Okay, now let's go to our second G. Oh, great song. Enjoy.
wasn't that a, a great song? Woo. Okay. So let's move right along and let's go to our third G or great craft. Miss Sharon, you're on. Happy Sabbath, boys and girls, and welcome to this week's WAG Craft. Today, we are going to be making a hug. Who here likes a hug? Raise your hand if you like a hug. We like hugs from our mommies and daddies when we get hurt, and we like hugs when uh, we're happy. We like hugs all the time. So today, what we're going to do is we are going to make a hug for someone else. If you know someone who is sick, or someone who um, could just use a nice hug from you, that's who we're gonna make this for today, okay? So in our story, the, um, the story for today, Jesus healed Peter's mother-in-law. And um, he did that by touching her. With his, he touching her hand, he helped heal her just by that. Now we can't heal someone with our hand, but just a touch, of a hug or even a hand on someone's um, arm can make them feel so much happier and so much better. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with your hand. We're going to put it on a piece of paper and we're going to trace it, okay? Okay, and we're going to do that two times, okay? So we've got to do one for each hand. So if you need help with your other hand, you can ask someone else to trace your hand that you might have a harder time tracing because it's not the hand you normally write with. Okay. Okay. And so after we get our hands done, we're going to cut them out. Okay, so we have our first hand done. Okay. Then we're going to cut out our second hand. Okay. Now that we have our two hands done, they'll go together like this. Okay, you have one for your left hand and one for your right hand. And what we're going to do is you take a ribbon or yarn or string or anything you have and you ask someone to measure it wrapping all the way around as if it were your arms. So you, can, you can't see that around you, but if you put it around your, your, um, your shoulders and you stretch out and you see how far your, your hug would be, this is about how big Miss Sharon's hug would be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to staple. You could use tape if you want or glue. It might take a little longer to dry. But I'm going to use a staple and staple my ribbon on. For some reason, this does not want... There we go. So we're going to staple it on. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Okay. There we go. That one works much better this time. Okay. So now what you have is you have, if you can see all this yarn here, can you see the end of the yarn? And bring it all the way down to the hands. So now what we have is our two hands together, our left hand and our right hand, and the yarn, or in this case ribbon, can go, wrap all the way around someone. So if they wrap it around their shoulders or wrap it around their um, their waist, and they feel you, your hands come together, to give them a nice big hug. So what we want to do is on the outside of our hands, the story of Jesus um, healing Peter's mother-in-law, uh, the one I'm talking about right now is in Matthew, where he touched her with his hand, Matthew 8, in verses 4 through 17. So that's Matthew chapter 8, verses I'm sorry, 14 to 17. I think I just said 4. So we can write Matthew 8, 14 to 17 on that side. Then on this side, we can let them know that Jesus loves you. 
You can write that nice and big. Jesus, you see that? Loves you. There we go. So on one side, I put our memory verse, which is Matthew, not memory verse, I'm sorry, where our story is, Matthew 8, verses 14 to 17. And on this side, we're writing, Jesus loves you. And then when they take the hands and they can wrap them all the way around like this. So they'll be wrapped around and they'll have all of this as their great big hug from you. And they will feel the love that you have for them and the love that Jesus has for them. So, boys and girls, I hope that you enjoyed today's craft. And I hope you'll be back next week for our Wild About God. Happy Sabbath. Thank you, Miss Sharon, for such a great craft. That was very nice. Okay, so let's move on to our fourth G, which is our trivia question. Did you sharpen up your mind? Okay, let's go. so that you can be wild about God. Thank you very much for joining us today. 
and have a blessed day. Bye-bye now.